Hi, it's Terry. I have been maintaining 180 pound weight loss with low carb, low calorie, meat focused eating since August of 2022. Happy Monday morning. I'm off work today and we're going to start this morning off with two pieces of bacon and a couple eggs. So I'm going to cook this bacon up and I'll be back. You know, I love me some crispy bacon. I got to turn down my, my heat here. It's pretty hot, but we're going to have three eggs, so one, two, three, that shot out all over me, this is why y'all say to wear an apron, ha, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to Add me some water. I'm going to cover it. I'll salt and pepper it later. I need to go on and get them covered. So, all right, I'll be back in two minutes. Alrighty. Them up there. Hang on. Come on, look, Ella. Scoot over. When I'm done cooking with my cast iron skillet, I usually just if it if it's the only thing I'm cooking that day. I typically just leave the burner on and then I wash it and then I set it back on my burner to cool and then um, or I set it back on the burner to dry. While it's hot, it's a good time to kind of rub all that baked on stuff off. I'm going to show you how I clean my cast iron skillet since we got time today. We're going to let those cool off because by the time we get done cleaning, it'll be time. Listen, my sink has dishes in it. Just ignore them. But I get my water going. While it's good and hot, I go on and put water in it. And that kind of uh, deglazes my pan. I use some Dawn and use a scrub brush. Rinse it out. I know some people say you can't use detergent and you can't get it wet while it's hot. You can't do this, that, and the other. Well, I do. So, uh, it's just how I do and how I've always done. And they do me well. And just when I notice that the, uh, you know, that the, that it's starting to be a little bit thin, the coating, the protective coating, I just add some oil. But not until it's all the way cooled down and all the way dry, so... That's how I clean it. Like I said, it's a mess around here, but don't you worry none about that. Damn. Gotta get in all the nooks and crannies. Alright, so she's clean. And now, I set her back on the oven. And I set it Ziggy, timer 15 minutes. Good morning, Terry. 15 minutes, starting now. Okay, and now she's going to cool down. While she's cooling down, let's see. I put a little bit of onion salt on here and some white pepper. So, let me show you the eggs here. They're over medium. See, they're not. No. Well. So remember when I said we're having two pieces of bacon? Mm -mm. We're having one and a half pieces of bacon. So, uh, Baxter. 
Ow. Lulu! Come here, buddy. So remember whenever I said we're having two pieces of bacon? Mm -mm. We're having one and a half pieces of bacon. But don't worry. I caught a piece so we could share with the ones that were not in here. So we got our eggs and bacon. A handful of tomatoes. Sprinkle cheese in here if you wanted. Whatever you want to do, but that's my breakfast. Going to the vet. Be leaving here about 8 30, 8 40. It's 7 35 right now, so. Anyway, mm. today we're going to make 90 second cornbread. I love we're going to try. I don't know how many drops to use. Um, I wrote down six. We'll try it. Got to make salads and go to Walmart. And at Walmart, I need half and half almond flour, brown, and white eggs. Heavy and heavy cream and sour cream, allulose, decaf coffee. Cabbage, rutabaga, onions, peppers, jicama, and grapes. So that's what we're going to get at Walmart. So, all right, I'll see you later. We're hanging out at the vet. They just have their annual checkup. They're not here. We're waiting. We're waiting on the vet to come in. It's time for their annual checkup. But I always bring these two together for some reason. They do really well together. She did good. They did her anal glands and she got her shots and her medicines and so she did good. They took brother to get blood drawn because, um, you know, he's just aging fast and so they're going to do blood work and he lost a bunch of weight. Well, he lost six pounds since last year. So they're going to do that and uh, so he's in the back getting blood drawn and they said he had a premature heartbeat. So um, they're going to check that later. It's just blood drawn. So, okay, I'll see y'all. Hey, so lunch today is a little bit different. <clears throat> I mean, I have a salad almost every day for lunch, but the different part is that uh, I ran to Walmart to get some stuff to make some salads today, and um, I picked up a rotisserie chicken. I've been seeing this thing all over my Facebook page about putting chicken in a baggie and uh, deboning it that way, so I wanted to try it. And um, anyway, so I got chicken. On my salad. So, so it's a chicken and salad. Can't call it chicken salad, because that's not chicken salad. Salad with chicken? Mm hmm. Anyway, that's what I'm having. That and an apple. And in the meantime, in between bites, we gotta go on and make up our salads for this week. So, off the meal prep. Bye. Hey there. So I'm going to read something that was in our local paper today. Um, somebody sent this to my sister and she shared it with my other sister and me and my mom. And the article, it's in our local paper. And it's somebody who writes music memories. And this one is called Nick Least and Pat Schwint. And the, the, the sharks are circling because it's 3.15. Anyway, <clears throat> for many years, Nick Least and Pat Schwint were the dynamic duo of the Jackson Band program. That was his counterpart for as a director, teacher. Um, <clears throat> Nick passed away in 2015 
and we recently lost Pat to cancer in November 2023. They were the best personality mix for dealing with rambunctious junior high and high school kids. Nick was an easygoing Santa Claus type of guy, while Patricia was an intense high energy director. Kids respectfully called her Sarge. Did we ever? That was her CB name too. Nick was born and raised in Ilmo, Missouri, and after graduating from Southeast Missouri State University in 1962, he directed bands in Advance, Missouri, Haytime, Missouri, and Carothersville, Missouri. Before he came, oh, before he came to Jackson in 1968. Years ago, he shared a great story with me about his earliest days at Jackson at first. I told you the circle, the, the sharks are circling. It's only 3.15 and they're just pants. Um, shared a great story with me about his earliest days in Jackson. At first, he was apprehensive about leaving his Carothersville job. But in his first year at Jackson, he was having an issue with the young brass player in the band. So he called the student's mama, who was a stout farmer lady with the pronounced German accent. After talking with her about the problem, her response was, it took all my egg money to buy that horn. By God, he's going to play that blanken thing. At that point, Nick realized with that level of parental support, he was in the right place and remained as head director until he retired. Nick also directed the Jackson Municipal Band for 42 years. The Jackson, uh, the Jackson Band Shell is named after him. That's actually behind my mama's house. Hang on. I'm going to spit out my gun. It's hard to talk around that big old wad of gun. All right. <clears throat> when my family and I, which is the person who wrote this, um, when my family and I returned to Cape from South Carolina in 1991, Nick Least was the first, first local music person I connected with. In the first week we moved in, he showed up at my front door, introduced himself, and asked if I'd be a guest to come play at the Jackson Municipal Band. As we visited, my youngest daughter, who was just a year old at the time, climbed up into his lap. I remember how he beamed and said, Steve, you got a million dollar family. He was right. I do. Pat Schwent was cool. She grew up in St. Genevieve and played saxophone in her big sister Brenda's all-girl band, The Swing Tones. <clears throat> they played the dance club circuit all throughout Southeast Missouri and Southern Illinois. Pat was the jam jazz band director at South at Jackson High School and developed a phenomenal program. I was in jazz band, I think only one year. <clears throat> um, her kids routinely filled seats in Missouri All-State Jazz and Concert Bands. She had enormous respect for musicians who could improvise regardless of the genre. Jazz, rock, country, blues, or grass didn't matter. If she and her husband, Tim were out and about and came up on a live band, chances were good she'd be talking to the fellows about how they were processing licks and playing over chord changes. In retirement, Pat continued her study of jazz music and took lessons with jazz players all over the United States to, to further develop her really amazing chops. <clears throat> she put together several combinations of bands she and pianist Pete Parasek formed a jazz duo and performed the winery circuit. She sure did. She was always playing at wineries. I had a lot, fun, a lot of fun playing some gigs in a ginormous Motown band she put together. In most combinations of bands, Pat was the only female and was always regarded as one of the guys. She really was one of the guys. In the spring of 2008, I asked Pat to play in the Pitt Orchestra for our Cape Central High School production of Grease. 
Rehearsing and performing with a consummate pro like Schwint was an invaluable experience for the student musicians in the pit. Pat always the Pat was always the first to rehearsal. In 2017, Schwint retired from playing completely and devoted herself to her grandkids, biking, trout fishing, and volunteering at Immaculate Conception Church. Due to their work ethic and commitment to the band program, it continued to grow along with the population growth in Jackson in the 80s and 90s. The dynamic duo convinced Jackson school officials a third director was needed. <clears throat> Scott Van Gilder, who was a former student of Nick's and a SEMO grad, was added to the team in 1984. Jackson's band program was the first three-director program in Southeast Missouri. Pat Schwint and Nick Lease taught together for a total of 27 years and touched thousands of life, lives. How do you put value on a legacy like that? You can't. Like the commercial says, it's priceless. So the author, now I have to kind of zoom in and slide. His name is Steve Schaffner. Steve Schaffner is the director of the Music Academy at Southeast Missouri State University. Previously, he was the orchestra director for Cape Girardeau Public Schools and Davidson Fine Arts Magnet School in Augusta, Georgia. He has performed and or directed in 48 states and 11 countries. So yeah, my sister got that article from a friend of hers and that's about my dad and his co-director, Pat Schwent. They were a great duo. <clears throat> but that's why I played <clears throat> her nickname, Sarge. That's why I played a brass instrument. I knew I didn't want her for my teacher. She was a good teacher and she expected you to give 110%. Dad was a good teacher and was okay if you gave 50%. That was more of my speed. Anyway, yeah, so my sister sent that article to us today, and I thought I'd share that with you. So the man's been dead since 2015, and there's still articles that come out about him. It's pretty funny. So, okay, bye. Hey, y'all. <clears throat> For supper tonight, I've got my jicama bean, hicka bean, yam bean chili. And wait till you see what I'm going to show you. Mm. Not this, but acorn squash and fruit. All right. Now, you're going to have to be patient with me for getting this video out. But Keto Focus has a 90-second bread. And I made a grilled cheese sandwich out of it. Look at that. It is so, it's, it's like crispy. Listen. It's crispy, and it tastes so good. So I'm gonna have that with my with my chili. I'm eating way too many calories, and I truly mean way too many calories. Not only is there two tablespoons of butter in her bread, I pan fried it in butter too, but. That's the grilled cheese sandwich. This is the one that I put some corn flake, cornbread flavoring. Not super strong. There's a hint of it there, though. So I'd be interested in seeing, because her bread recipe called for a fourth cup of almond bread, or almond flour. I'd love to know what would happen if I did Eighth cup of almond flour and eighth cup of um, corn meal. I don't know the macros, and so you know, whatever. Um, but anyway, so that's my supper tonight. Again, way too many calories because two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of butter, and then it cooked in probably about two or three tablespoons of butter. But anyway, I don't know when the video will be out. I apologize because it just I just did it today, just now. But I will get that video out sometime this week or sometime next week. Um, just watch for it because mwah, she did an amazing job. Keto Focus and her 90-second bread. Oh, okay, bye.